Johnson with a heavy hit on Spurgeon. Then he knocks Middleton to the ice. And we get a whistle here. Let's just hope it was an early jump to the dress room, some maintenance, equipment, whatever. But Jared Spurgeon went back to the wild locker room there. She didn't appear to be hobbled, but he did leave the bench early. Been hit like that a million times, and I guess just caught my, my shoulder the wrong way. And usually you take bumps and bruises and hits, and some of them are a little harder than the others, but at this point there was a little pop right away and about two days later we, we got a scan and then sort of get to feel for the rehab process and everything you have to go through to get ready. Boy, what a tough break for Jared Spurgeon. Hurt in the preseason before we even dropped the puck on the regular season. Obviously that's rough on him, but even a tougher break for the Minnesota Wild who now are without their captain for some time. You just want to be out there with your teammates, especially regular season. You get out there and you feel the, the atmosphere of the stands, the, the building, the energy that they always bring. And when that time comes, I'll be, I'll be very excited and very ready. outside, come back, we'll do two pumps down, two pumps back, okay, and then we'll do some, uh, and we'll go right away into the dot to dot with just the power turns, okay? Do you want me to lead it? Yes, okay, let's go. We have Mason and um, Jared skating, so I wanted to make sure to give them a nice long warm up um, to make sure that they get loose, you know, after a couple of days off. To the right, to the right. Yeah, good. Both are different injuries, different types of the bodies, different positions. So uh, I'll have to, to kind of manage, you know, forward position to deep position. Somebody with a lower body, somebody with an upper body. So we'll uh, make sure that they're doing the stuff that they need to do for themselves to get ready. As you hit the far blue, cross, 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 cross. As you hit the near blue here, that's full speed out. You just shadow him again. You know, they get here early, they get their stretches, they get uh, work done on the tables, different things like that. Uh, then we get a skate. Uh, right now, after, they'll get a workout. Uh, a lot of times, go see the doc or a PT or something like that. So it's pretty much an all morning to afternoon deal. And each thing that we do is, there's a purpose to it down there. Yeah. So we're gonna be doing some uh, blood flow restriction training, which is a great way with injured athletes for us to be able to challenge them, but also be able to stick within some of the kind of the parameters of having an injury. So it's a great way to challenge them and fatigue them out, but keep things simple. Have you done it on upper extremity before? So it gets a little bit like nervy and tingly sometimes, so it's not the most comfortable. Not that lower body is the most comfortable either, but we're trying to recover from the injury, but also try to maintain their fitness and readiness. So once the injury and biology has done its job, that they're ready to go. Trying to let them recover, but also trying to maintain their overall fitness. Slow up, slow down. Goal is to get to 30 of them. Oh yeah, look at that vascularity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting that pump on. Yeah. You're next, buddy. You gotta get bolts in there. All right, one more thing. For me, it's really important too is make sure that they perform when they get back. So it's not just um, they're back on the ice or back playing, but ready to play as well. We're all hockey players and that's all we want to do. It's definitely frustrating, but at the same time, you just got to keep that positive mindset and know that you're doing the right steps to make sure that when you get back, you're, you're ready to help the team out. 
He's been through it. He's very professional. He knows what he needs to do to get in and out of here. He's just really eager to get back. Things have been moving exactly what we'd want, and uh, he's been working really hard. So yeah, it's been great. You just have to look at the big picture, and that's that's the most important thing. It's, it's such a long season. Injuries are inevitable. Everybody's going through it, and I think that's why it's such a, a critical piece is, is the rehab, is getting them back and getting them ready to play. You just want to be out there with your teammates, especially regular season. You get out there and you feel the, the atmosphere of the stands, the, the building, the energy that they always bring, and when that time comes, I'll be, I'll be very excited and very ready. Still no Jared Spurgeon, but he's inching closer. Freddie Goudreau and Alex Galagoski still out as well. No further update on them. Goudreau, um, did that happen last game? Yeah, can he join you at some point or probably? He will not. Okay. Right. I know the injuries are a thing, obviously, but you know people are out uh, in special teams. You're missing guys that play huge roles on your special teams, too. So the hope is that somehow when they come back that they'll inject life into it. Tomorrow night in D.C., it's... Not going to be an easy one second of a back-to-back, -back, and the Caps not off to the best start this year, but you know they'll be ready. Has that smart and started yet? I don't believe so. No. Certainly missed a pretty good road, but he's, of course, back in the Twin Cities, injured as Spurgeon, Galagowski back there, Boldy back there. The Capitals win it 3-2. We will see you Sunday afternoon in Newark, New Jersey. As Minnesota saddled with a 3-2 shootout loss here tonight from the nation's capital. Boldy's the closest one. Mm -hmm. But he won't join you later in the trip, right? Um, or he could. It's not out of the question, but likely not. Okay. What seems like it's missing is still that moment. Magic players make magic moments in the wild need a magic moment right now. Not what you'd call a good road trip for the Wild, grabbing just one out of a possible six points. Now they head back into the schedule, and it won't get any easier. you got to assume Assistant General Manager Chris O'Hearn is busy working those phones, getting someone here from Iowa as they get reinforcements up with the big club. My name is Chris O'Hearn. I'm the Assistant General Manager of the Minnesota Wild. In the event where you need somebody, you have discussions in the coach's room immediately after. Who are we looking at? Who are we thinking? Mike Murray is the GM of the Iowa Wild. He'll talk with Brett McLean, the head coach. So we'll get, we'll get a lot of feedback from those two guys as who's performing well, who's earned the chance to get that call up. And then, you know, there's a lot of discussions about what uh, player we're trying to replace. So we've got to find the right fit for where we expect that recalled player to fit. Sometimes even take into account uh, the cap situation, how much money we have. It's just a reality for this year. Tough to cut your teeth in the National Hockey League. You want proof? Ask rookie defenseman Damon Hunt. Makes his NHL debut on this road trip, then gets sent back to Iowa yesterday. And now guess what? The Wild have a need. He's back up I-35, heading north towards St. Paul because the team needs him again. Things happen pretty quick. I mean, I'll get called into the coach's office or get a phone call and then drive up to Mini here and uh, drop off my gear and uh, get ready for the next day, uh, whatever the schedule may be. That's the easiest call to make of anybody. It's, it's hey, you're heading up and uh, no, one's ever, no one's ever been you know, upset about that call. So it's exciting, especially for young guys like a guy like a Damon who comes up and plays his first game. His family gets to see him play in the NHL for the first time. It's like a, a reward for them in a way. It was great for me to see too, just to see them so happy and um, have their son to play in the NHL. Um, it's, it's a good feeling for sure. Moose! Hey! Ecker! Hey! Patty! Hey! Midzi! Hey! Merbs! Hey! And Flower! Hey! Oh, Flower! Playing in the game, it was really surreal. To play against guys that I grew up idolizing, like watching OV, uh, that was unbelievable. I, he scored on me actually. I missed my assignment, but it got called offside, <laughs> which is uh, which is a pretty good relief. I'm just trying to take advantage of the opportunity because you know they, they may not come by very often. So I think just taking full advantage of it. Every single guy 
we'll do what it takes to get here. You know, as an organization, it's exciting to have young guys fill those roles. You never know how long it's gonna last, so you try and take advantage of it. Uh, patience, it's a little cheesy, but <laughs> I think it's just representing my hockey career and things take time, so. I mean, obviously I don't want anybody to get injured, but um, that opens up uh, a spot for me, so. I'm glad I'm here and I'll, I'll make the best of it for sure. Do everything in my control and uh, when I get the nod, I just have to be ready and, and play hard. Two full days out for these guys, only nine games in, but it feels like they kind of needed that mental and physical reset before uh, hitting the ice back again yesterday in practice. Give us some luck. Give us some luck. All right. Good job, guys. We're underway here in the rematch between these two sides. Played Sunday. The Devils claiming that win 4-3. to three. New Jersey comes in 5-2-1 and one on the season on the road. Find our legs here, boys. Find our legs. He's taken off the puck by Middleton, got it back, centers, and they score. Holtz coming off the bench from the high slot, beats Gustafson, and the Devils score first. It's 1-0. Oh, oh, oh. Finding some space, Jesper Bratt to the left circle, thrown right in front, they score. The cloud was open, and a nice passing play. It's 2-0 Devils. He's flying, seven. Quickly across to Frisov, Zuccarello fires, save Vanacek, rebound Erickson, Ack has a couple of whacks, and Vanacek able to cover, while creating some pressure. Zuccarello in the corner, to the line, Addison, to Frisov, fire, score! Guys, we are a net front team. Get there, deliver the puck there, and we'll score some goals. Our energy is good. Our energy is good. We're going to use this game. Remember it, but we got to push. We got to push right now. Let's go. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, you might No, yeah, 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 I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. Don't talk to me. Oh, that's boys. Go! 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 Alright boy, I can't wait. 
Back to his skate, shovels one to Middleton, snapping a chance to... He's got Hamilton scores. And that'll make it 5 3 for the Devils and seal the Wilds' fate. It's just one of those things where you're trying to build uh, towards something and, uh, you know, you're trying to find your game again and it kind of slips away. So um, that was a definitely a tough game. We played, I mean, really good. We had a lot of chances, but then it's, you know, it hurts even more when you lose that game then. So as the final second winds off, the Devils make it two in a row over Minnesota. A 4-3 win in New Jersey, a 5-3 win here in St. Paul. Penalty trouble ultimately costing Minnesota down the stretch. The homestand continues tonight for Minnesota as the Wild get set to take on the New York Rangers. I know it's early in the season, Tom, but it sure feels like this is a must win for Minnesota. We're a little bit ticked off the way things have been going so far, and um, it's one of those things you just got to put your head down and work your hardest and try to lead by example by showing that work ethic and, you know, not getting too negative. Bonino plays it to the line, it's out front and they score. Those were like three really unlucky bounces um, they scored on, so for us it was important not to panic and just keep going. And the Rangers have scored on two of their first three shots in the game. It's 2-0 New York. It didn't feel like one of those games that we deserved to be down 3 nothing. so we had to will ourselves to come back there and stay with the system, stay with our energy. We had a lot of good energy in that game, and you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta pay the piper when things are going well. Rangers have numbers at the Minnesota line, and it is 3-0 New York. Moose, I assume uh, you've already talked about it. But tell us, how are we gonna win this game? Yeah, it might be able to say thank you. You gotta encourage everyone around you. There's guys that don't have the, the confidence. Encouragement goes a long way in helping someone beside you, you know, pick up their feet and move forward. Your leaders, your captains, are always an extension of the coaching staff. And we asked Moose to uh, lead in that direction, and he did. You know, it's nice to have a veteran like him talk and understand the game, you know, well enough to know when to talk, what to say, and we just done a great job of that. We got one here, guys. Let's go. Walker save. He's lost his stick. Burbis fires off the post. Rebound, they score! Spillane over the slot. Faber walking it through. What a front of just passed it to me. It was a lucky because I think it hit the stick on the ice and then, you know, I just tried to shoot it to the net and, yeah, when we were up, you know, 4-3 then. So, yeah, it always feels good to have the team. We have a young kid like that who comes to work every day, has been playing well. It's easy for an older guy to tag along with that or to keep encouraging it. So it's his work ethic that was, you know, that's been driving him all season. It was unlucky to get the 4-4, but I mean, it was important to stick together, keep going, and we came back in the game. Luba comes in and delivers a couple jabs to the back of Marco Rossi. Clearly some frustration for Minnesota. Everyone pushed forward, and, and we, we played a really good wild hockey that day. A dozen seconds left in overtime. Boldy in the neutral zone. Cuts into the Rangers end. Feeds Faber. Right circle. Crowd urging a shot. Through in front for Boldy. And Trocek just knocked it away at the last moment. 65 minutes, not enough. Second point in the standings will be determined when we return to St. Paul.
second shootout for the Wild this year. Matt Zuccarello will face Jonathan Quick to get it started. He scores! The fans were still exporting us, were cheering us on, and I mean, that gave us hope, and um, they gave us like the extra energy. Here's our Timmy Panarin going first for the Rangers. Pick it up, Quick. Come on, come on. Kaprizov tried to go to the forehand like Zuccarello did. This time, Quick gets the pad on it. What's that guy can do is pretty crazy. He's Gumby. He's just uh, it's acrobatic, Cirque du Soleil. It's, uh, it's awesome to watch. To put up a good show for fans coming back to the game, you know, tired up, that, that was nice. And the fan definitely responded to it, right? It was loud and it was fun uh, being part of that comeback for sure. Here's Boney on his forehand. Our identity is our work ethic, is our grit level, it's our tenaciousness, and uh, we got to that game a little bit late, but obviously we were able to come through with the win. There were really good things we did in this game, and we can look back to this game and say, okay, that's one thing we want, we want to play, you know. We played hard, we went on a four check, we won badless, and then we, we were scoring these goals, and um, so that's, of course, a game we can always look back. We've had some ups and downs, you know, throughout this season so far, and it's not easy, right? Every team is good, every night is, is a new challenge, and to see the, the character the guys showed, you know, being down through zip and coming back in the game like that was big, and getting the win, obviously, right? So definitely it was a good feeling inside to, uh, to get that one. It felt no doubt in my mind that we're going to come back and win that game, and we did. We pick each other up, we don't quit <laughs> and uh, game puck goes to flower. Yep. Good job boys. Uh, I don't know. Tough start, you know, it was hard on Gusty, but after that you guys picked it up and I was lonely. It was a little quiet back there. You guys were awesome. We'll battle back. Big win for us. Good job. I just thought it was a great team win, you know, it was I was not more deserving than anybody else. The only way to turn things around is to stay positive and then keep pushing, keep working hard. And when it does happen, it, it, it kind of, you know, busts down like a dam and starts flowing well. And if you don't stay positive in that moment, then uh, you'll never see that opportunity.